By the border of California, this journey was filled with nothing but opportunity and excitement for the new. I was having a crazy good time, and things were about to get even more crazy. When you look in the mirror, is the child still inside you proud of the grown-up you have become? What can I say? Life was pretty good. Driving on the open road, sunny days, so many different landscapes to look at. I was just completely thrilled. Palm trees. I mean, it was basically exactly what I wanted. And honestly, it was even more cool because I could stop by beautiful Las Vegas for a bit. I love Vegas because it's so over the top and weird. Chilling with some crazy Elvis impersonators, the slot machines, go look around the casino. And then actually I got an amazing vegan buffet. It got stuffed so much, noms on noms on noms. And then it was back on the road, heading back up toward Utah and finally seeing snow again. And getting so stoked for a drive that I have done year after year after year. Finally getting to Salt Lake City, having a couple more vegan noms, making the trek to one of my favorite annual visits to the Sundance Film Festival. There are so many things going on at Sundance every year and it's really hard to navigate it. From all the movies, to the parties, to the mixing events, there's pretty much something you could do all the time but one of my favorite experiences at Sundance Film Festival is a little different it's a little bit die hard okay so I'm just outside of Main Street in Park City I'm having some vegan cheddar flavor squares I'm sleeping about two hours well kind of sleeping two hours I'm gonna walk down and you're gonna see Literally, my favorite thing about Sundance, which is the wait list line in the morning to get available tickets. I made it to the line. As you can see, I got here about 6.30 and it's actually just as packed as I thought it would be. The front of the line people, they're pretty amazing because these are diehards that like literally have stayed um, like from four in the morning here uh, to wait in line and they are here every year and they know Sundance probably better than anybody. This is the famous line I was talking about and here's some people that I've actually met a couple years in a row. This is Herman and John. When did you guys get here this morning, first of all? About 15. Five. Came in about the same time every day this week and have been in about the same place. Got it. Yeah. That's the crazy thing about the line. It's like every year there's like new, like, okay, this is the system this time. This is what you gotta do this time. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about why you, why do you keep coming back <laughs> to this insane version of Sundance that seems so extreme? We were just talking about that. About, uh, we watched a documentary yesterday called Trophy, which examines the, you know, the both sides of the argument on big game hunting. And so here we are getting ready for our big hunt this morning. You know, we're gonna try and bag the tickets. We've got our targets lined up. We've got our strategy, our sight lines, everything else. We're just loaded and ready. We like a lot of different things. I, I guess our problem is leading the genre is probably uh, uh, crime, war type things. You know, <laughs> Google Sundance movies to watch. Yeah. And there, there's, there's an incredible number of lists before the festival. These are must-see movies that you need to, to watch. Yeah, exactly. We topped out at 21 yes. lists. <sighs> so how many of you have you guys seen so far this year? We've seen 13 so far. Yeah. Well, he's seen I got here a little earlier. Yeah, he's seen 15. I've, I've seen 15. Wow. What's the most movies you guys have been able to cover in a day? Six. We've done six once or twice. 
That's incredible. Now you have to arrange transportation between movies. Yeah. And, and we have very understanding wives. Yes. <laughs> you get to sleep in. <laughs> so this is like Mr. Successful here. What's your name? Uh, my name is Matt, and I have the exact same phone cover. Dude, that's baller. <laughs> okay, so what uh, time did you get here? Uh, well, we actually were here all night, like since midnight. Nice. We like got in line at four, though, nice. making sure nobody walked in the door before that's us. That's what I assumed four was about the day. So, yeah. dude, you excited to get some good tickets, I guess? Yeah, we want to go to Ghost Story, and there's only eight tickets. So. Dude, rock on. All right, yeah. congrats, dude. Here's the game that you're playing when you're in the wait list. So, every person in this line could get 20 tickets. What's happening is these are the tickets that are getting released um, in the morning because foreign press, international press, you know, Robert Redford, they have reserved seats. Well, those seats now are been notified to be off reserve. So now you have available seats that can get filled. That can vary from venue to venue because of the size of the venue. You're trying to find that perfect movie that has already been premiered so that then the foreign press are going to show up so that numbers go higher and that is timed out to be maybe, you know, maybe a little bit under par so that you can try and find enough tickets to get what you need. Now, I am trying to get into a shorts program, which is a great bet. Um, there's two available and I'm trying to hopefully get three tickets. Again, this is the dance because technically, all of these people right here, those are all people that can all get 20 tickets each, easily possibly selling out the whole thing by the time it comes to me, even though I woke up this early to get into this line. And I would feel bad because if I was the last one, all these people aren't getting in there either. So there you go. That's the line. And that's the gamble. Hey, did you get what you needed? Everything except the big sick, but we got a good backup for that, so we're okay. Good, awesome, dude. See you later. All right, have a good day. Yeah. So I got one, and I'm so happy. I'm the happiest person here today, and I got here at 5:30 a.m. Awesome. Congrats. <laughs> Yay. I got my tickets. They are exactly the ones I wanted, but I got some tickets. Now here's the crazy thing: there's still people in that line. I don't know if they're actually gonna get tickets. I think they may have gambled and lost. Okay. So the tickets are securely safe in my pocket. And now I can actually, after one of the longest days you could ever imagine, I'm gonna finally sleep with a normal person for a little bit. Person that lives in the van. Night, night, yet again. So you got your tickets, big whoop. Now you actually have to get to your venue, and the only way to get there is the notorious Sundance shuttle system. All right, so I am doing something right now, which is also one of my favorite things at Sundance, which is riding the uh, shuttles everywhere, and you always have an amazing conversation. So this is Lily, who is actually at the coffee shop I was at, but I just found out that Lily's been living in an RV for two years. How long? And when did you decide to live in the RV? Um, when I left home. Yeah. It's an easy way to travel. Yeah, and you live part-time seasonally, right? Yes. So you live here in the winter and work at the... I work on the river in Tennessee in the summer. And I work on the river in Tennessee in the summer. And have you done, have you done that route? Like, where else have you been in, in America in the um, RV? I traveled the country with my mom when I was like first grade, but this is really like my first time traveling outside of my comfort zone. What's your advice for me now that I'm just like a, a month into doing this, like uh, like living that this lifestyle? Find great people to hang out with. I actually took the wrong shuttle, and now I'm kind of just chilling to try and make my 3:30 move. That's again the Sundance way. You get on the wrong shuttle, you may be barely making your movie. So I'm now on my third, maybe fourth <laughs> bus, uh, trying to get to Eccles. Uh, I'm usually way better at this. Like usually I know these routes like the back of my hand, but I think it's just because I've not been here. Yeah. So <laughs> anyways, I have done the longest loop to get to one venue, but we're going to get there on time.
So I meet my friend and we barely make it on time to this amazing premiere of a movie called Chasing Coral. Everybody loves it. There's a huge applause. The filmmakers are there. We're talking. We get spit out. It's nighttime. We flow into downtown. Everybody's whooping it up. And suddenly we're at a Busta Rhymes concert and I'm seeing Busta Rhymes live. It's absolutely surreal. What an amazing end to Sundance. And then I get a phone call from my mom. So it's the last day of Sundance, and this morning I woke up and got a call from my mom saying that my grandmother's dead. She was a beautiful woman, so kind, and I'm going back home to Pokey to be there for my mom. Bound for your distant home, you have been gone so long and seen so much that will you recognize home at all once you return? I was so terrified that I wouldn't know what to do to help my mother grieve the passing of my grandma. But when I arrived home and she opened the door to hold me, I understood I didn't have to do anything at all. I just had to be with her and remember. On January 31st at 7.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning, my grandmother Emily made the decision to leave this lifetime. There was no struggle to breathe, just a very soft goodbye. With my grandmother's passing, I was compelled to talk to the amazing women who make up my family about what it means to be a mom. If you want to hear what they have to say, go ahead and click on part two.